want to welcome you to this special moment. This is a time when you'll be nurtured and nudged. It is the Deborah's Credo Show. And I am your host, Manuela Izuma. Today, we're going to be looking at clarity. Are you interested in knowing what, who, why about your life? Then join me as we go on this journey to understand everything about us and life. God bless you. Don't forget to call in your friends. You know what? I have been wondering where to start. This is our very first episode of the Burra's Cradle Talk Show. And I've been wondering what should I talk about first? I've been deliberating, I've been thinking, and I've been praying too. And I feel this is where to start. And we're starting at the point of clarity, self-clarity, or general clarity, whichever one you're going to use, whichever one would best apply to you. And I'm sure you're wondering why, why would we start there? Because I have seen over the years, through my own experiences and those of others, that whenever you do not see clearly, you cannot have a smooth journey. If you are driving on the highway or even on a narrow path in the dark, you will not be able to drive with 100% confidence. Your journey may not be as smooth. There may be some potholes. There may be some bumps, some things that you will hit, some things you will climb, some things you will destroy that you wouldn't have if you had seen better. And if you want to apply that to our lives, there are mistakes, there are offenses, there are situations which maybe we would have avoided or handled differently if we had clarity. Clarity is not just about life. It's also about you. Do you know if you do not see yourself the way you really are, you may have a problem bringing out the best of your potentials. And as we go through this month and through the episodes that God will lead us through, I'm praying that one of the things that we will all have is clarity of purpose, understanding who we are and why we are here. And I'm trusting God that in no distant time, your vision will be clearer and you will move forward with speed in Jesus' name. So today, let's just delve in into the word clarity. When you're talking about clarity, you're talking about clearness, we're talking about brightness, we're talking about the ability to see or see through, to have understanding of a matter. And when we say there's no clarity or there's a lack of clarity, it means also or implies that there's some form of confusion, there's some form of darkness, there's some way that you are not able to make a judgment based on the things you know just because there's some part that is not clear. Lack of clarity is a major, major weakness that can actually affect a life and destiny. So, let me begin by asking, how clear are you about who you are? And how clear are you about life? If we take up a mirror, what do you expect to see every day? Physically, we have looked at the mirrors for so many years, so we already know that our noses are flat or pointed, we know whether we have a nice looking dentition or not. We know whether, okay, our eyebrows, or our ears are at the right position as usual. But you know, there are some things that change, maybe like our hairstyles. For the women who do makeup, sometimes because of makeup, your appearance may look a little bit different. So there are times you may pick up the mirror and you see something different. I will confess this morning 
a sister came to do my own makeup and when I picked up the mirror and looked at my face I was like oh my god is this me sometimes we get surprised by the person we see in the mirror because we are not even clear on who is really behind the mirror and it's very important that we start here I'm starting here because sincerely this has been one of the greatest challenges in my life how to define myself who am I who am I I have a lot of people tell me different things about me but all the things they are saying doesn't mean that that is me and until I know who I really am I will not be able to function as I really should and look, if you're somebody who sometimes asks the question, who am I? You're not out of place. It's not out of order. Sometimes it's good to ask. It's good to be sure that you're actually radiating and reflecting your real personality. It's important because even Jesus, there was a time he asked his disciples, who do men say I am? He wanted to be sure that the person that he is, is also the person they are receiving. And funny enough, people had different answers. Some said to Jesus, you had to, well, I talked with the disciples and said to them that, oh, he is Elijah. They called different other prophets, Moses, he's this, he's that. It was only Peter who had clarity. And only Peter was the one who was able to say, you are Jesus, you are the son of God. And that meant everything to Jesus. Everything. If I go out and ask, who are you? There are many people who have different answers to give me. But are those answers to you? Some people have made mistakes of taking the answers of other people to define themselves. But you're not supposed to do that. You are supposed to get your definition from God. Anyway, let me not jump the gun. We're going to talk about that in future episodes. And let me begin, begin sincerely by talking about the fact that you need to know you. I know I'm speaking to women and also men. Self-clarity is one of the most important things, gifts you can give to yourself. In this world where there's so much competition, there are so many ideas, so many new things, so many things you want to try and go with the fads and the trends. Before long, so many people lose their identities. But if you're someone who has clarity, you will know who you are and what you should be doing. So please, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of looking inwards. Don't be afraid of asking questions. There are sometimes you will want to go and ask, who am I really? And then you look into the mirror and then what you see is one ugly face come up. It could be the face of your anger. It could be the face of your doubt. It could be the face of your disappointment. You just look at yourself and all you see is shame. Look. That first image you see may not also be your complete image. There's a mirror that when you look into it, it will never change and never fail you. And that's the mirror of God's word. So while we are going to go through the process of, you know, defining who we are and what we are here for, our locus, that very initial point of reference, must be God's word. Anything out of that will not give us the true picture of who we are. So yes, I was talking about myself. And I've had many years of asking who am I. I have asked as a young girl growing up. I've asked as a married woman. I got married to a pastor. So I used to be in conflict between Am I a pastor's wife? Am I a pastor in my own right? Or 
What else is there about my life? And those struggles were on. You know, when you are a pastor's wife, and now I'm coming to pastor's wives directly, it is, it, you have to be careful to maintain the identity God has given you and to be able to subject your dreams to your husband because that is not outside it and still stand and reflect who you are in Christ. Because there are so many people who have different images of who a pastor's wife should be. When I was growing up, I felt that a pastor's wife must be somebody who can sing. She must be able to sing very well. Because before her husband comes up to preach, she must be able to create an atmosphere of glory. I also used to believe that a pastor's wife, if she cannot sing, at least she'll be able to play some musical instruments. I also felt that a pastor's wife should be somebody who can cook for the whole church, wash for the whole church, meet every single need for the whole church, and also meet the needs of her husband and her own children. I felt the pastor's wife had to be one superwoman. I also believed that the pastor's wife must be the prayer house. She must be the one who prays and prays and prays and prays and prays and prays and prays, prays non-stop. Please do not take me wrong. I'm not saying that all these things are not important. They are important. They have their role to play. But they don't make you. And when I found, let me take for instance, the part of singing that I didn't know how to sing. <laughs> if I take the mic, in fact, lyrics will fly out of my head. Sometimes I'll even start singing songs that nobody knows so nobody can back me up. And I'll be like, oh my God, what is happening? I used to doubt. Am I really fit for this position? I had a lot of self-doubt. A lot of uncertainty. Lack of confidence. So much. And before long, I was not as effective as I should have been. But I thank God for mercy and I thank God that God gave me opportunities again and again to learn who I am and to bring me back to where I should be. And I'll share a lot of those experiences with you as we go along. But please, I want you to know clarity is important. It's important that you know who you are and don't just know who you are by the definitions of anybody else. And not even by only your definition, but by the definition of God. He made you. He knows what he wants of your life. Now, I don't know how many of you have watched The Gods Must Be Crazy. And you see that in that film, it was just about a bottle of Coke that fell from the sky. Coke fell. <laughs> That bottle came down and the whole community went crazy. Everybody wanted a piece of it. Some people were using it as a grinding machine. Others were using it as a musical instrument. Some others were using it for um, water, fetching water and doing different things. None of them used that bottle for the reason it was made was made to contain coca-cola that was the reason for the bottle but they didn't know and it was not used and somebody says when the need or the use or the reason for a thing is unknown abuse is inevitable so you need to have clarity because if you don't have clarity you will not know exactly why. God made you for a purpose. He has a definition for your life. He has a design for your life. There's something he wants to make out of you. There's a reason he brought you here. And please don't think I am just saying this to patronize you. I'm not. The God I serve never does anything 
just for doing its sake. There's always a purpose behind what he's doing. So, there's a purpose for you. And when you find it, abuse will end in your life. And I don't know who I'm speaking to right now that has been abused and has been abusing her life. Using it in ways that are not effective, not productive, because the devil has filled you with thoughts that are not godly. Today, everything that has put you in that place, I uproot it from your life in the name of Jesus. And I speak to you that from today you will understand your why. You will see clearly and you begin to function as you should in Jesus' mighty name. So anyway, quickly I will just look at a few verses with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know fully, even as I have been fully known. Then shall I know fully, even as I have been fully known. See, Paul was speaking and he was saying that as we walk with God and we get closer to God and we continue with the Spirit, he will begin to reveal things to us. And there's a time that we'll finish our tenure on earth and we'll get to heaven. And when we get to heaven, we will have the full picture of who we are. But even though that process will take place, we are already known. Then we will know fully. But that means that at least while we are here, we can begin the partial knowing. Partial knowing does not mean you must know yourself only 10%. It doesn't mean that you must know only 20% or 30%. You can know 70. You can know 80. You can know 90%. When we get to heaven, 100%. But for now, we can strive to begin to know who we are and why we are here. I truly pray that you will have clarity. Okay, so now let's just look at a few things that happen when you have clarity. How does clarity help you? What's the importance of having it? First of all, clarity helps you with find focus and direction. When you have clarity, you find focus and you get direction. Because you can see better, because you can understand better, you now know how to apply yourself. You know where to put your eyesight, you know where to set your goals, you know where to create your vision and you know what to go after and it is not easy for you to be sidetracked. The next thing is that clarity, it makes it easier for you to prioritize. There's so much pulling for our attention, so much wanting to take us out of the important things of our life. There's so much distractions around. But if you have clarity, you will be able to identify that which is a distraction and you set it aside to take it later and you take the important, you're able to prioritize and take the most necessary things and put them first and do them first. The next thing is that clarity helps you to push and to go through doubt. There are times that... Um, you, maybe you catch a dream or you just have something that comes to your mind and oh, you want to do this thing and you feel you should do it. And before you know, difficulties arise, there are storms and confusion. What keeps you going? What makes you know for a certainty that you should keep at this thing is the fact that you had clarity you knew where you were going from the beginning you knew what you wanted to achieve and you kept and somehow because that vision is clear you're able to keep at it you know the bible says in habakkuk it says write the vision make it clear so that he that reads can run with it you are able to run and not be hindered when doubts arise if you have clarity. And the next thing is that clarity helps you to feel or get content. You're, you're happy with your success. 
when you get it. You're happy with your achievements when you get it. Let's take for instance, you feel or you believe that, oh, you're supposed to write an article in, in a month or two articles a month. And the articles are supposed to be 500 words. When you write those two articles for the month, you are satisfied. You are happy that you have achieved the success you want. But if you don't know what you're supposed to do, and maybe you just see other people writing books and you now get up and say, oh, I must write my 40 books. I must write 20 books in one year. Look, even though you want to write, you start writing the articles that are the things you should really be doing. Because you don't understand, you're not clear of what your own God-given assignment is, before long you'll be frustrated. Every other person is doing it. They are able to do more than me. Why is it? And complaints and all those things will be coming. My sister, my brother, please, you need to have clarity. So now let's ask a question. How do you know that you're lacking clarity in your life? How do you know there is no mental clarity or spiritual clarity? How do you know that um, there's confusion and there are things that are just there trying to tap your energy and make sure you lose focus? How do you know? The first thing is that you find out that you're always questioning yourself. You're always second guessing yourself. Your inner critic has such a loud voice and is always telling you you're not right. So you, you, you just can't go ahead. As you take the step, thoughts come and as those thoughts come, you begin to wonder, am I doing the right thing? Am I sure? Oh, am I sure? Am I sure? Doubt is increasing, uncertainty increasing, and before long, you're not even doing that thing you set out to do anymore. If you find out that from time to time, you find that you're always questioning yourself, then you may be lacking clarity. The fact is that what you're doing may be the right thing you're even doing. But because you're not sure, you are, there's room for doubt to come in. And before you know, you're sidetracked and you're out of it. The next thing is that you find out that you say yes to everything because you're not able to prioritize. So somebody comes in, oh, please, can you assist me to do this? Yes. They give you an assignment. Yes. They give you this. Yes. You may be working somewhere and you're the secretary. You're supposed to produce letters, produce minutes, produce memos for the organization. And that is your job. But other people come, can you help me do this assignment, do that? And before you know, because you are not clear on your assignment, you're saying yes to everybody. So they call you to come and do something in admin, you're there. Somebody calls you in the accounts department, you're there. And what you were called to do, you find out that you're not doing it. So you become a yes man. And you fail to prioritize. If you find out that in your life, you are doing every other person's bidding and your own core assignment, you're not able to do it. It shows that you're lacking clarity. So you need this discussion. The next one is... <sighs> How do I put it? You, you find out that you bite more than you can chew. You are always <laughs> taking on new things. And look, for me, that was one of my major challenges. In fact, even till now, I battle with it sometimes. If I write out my dreams, my God, they are always so big, so lofty. And as they are big, before you find, you find out that before the year goes halfway, you've already given up on everything you set out to do because there's no clarity. Clarity gives you clear vision. It shows you the thing that you need to do and it helps you put them in order. I've said that before. So if you find that you're putting your hands everywhere, 
you are having dreams to do different things, then you are lacking in clarity. Also, you are lacking in clarity if you need to ask for advice. You, you seek for too many people's opinions before you do something. It's evident. Because when you get an idea, you should also have a reason why you're doing it. And there should be some form of backup for what you're doing. Please do not misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you should not seek counsel. You should seek counsel when you need counsel. You should get wisdom. You should know who to reach, who to talk to. Important. But if every step you need to take, you must get the opinions and approval of everybody, then it shows that you're lacking in clarity. So where do you stand? Do you think it is worthwhile for you to take this journey? I think it is. Wherever you are right now, you still have somewhere better you can be. And I'm praying to God that as you join me, this month and beyond, we'll look into the issues of clarity, be able to get a definition for our lives as at present, because they will change as you go along, and be able to go ahead to achieve those things that God has set out for us. So please join me on this. And I pray we will end with a beautiful testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome back from the teaching. This is still Deborah's Credo's talk show with Pastor Manuela Izunwa. My name is Gold Anikbe. All right. Um, welcome back, Mom. Thank you. Um, while you were teaching, you said something. Um, if you don't see clearly, you will not have um, a smooth path. And we'd like to, there's a question. We'd like to hear your story, how you were able to um, scale through and you were able to discover your true self as a pastor wife and also as a barrister. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I will begin by saying um, I'm not there yet. I'm still on my journey. So I, I, have, I will not claim that I have got everything in perspective, but I am definitely not where I used to be. Okay, like I was saying then, I, I had, because I kept comparing myself with other people and not figuring out who I was and what I had for my assignment, I, I noticed that I was never able to bring out the best in me. So I always felt other people were better than me. And there's one thing, there's a way self-doubt works. Self-doubt demeans you. It, it just makes you feel smaller than you are. And everything that you have, no matter how good it is, it makes you look at it as if it is less. And once you feel something is of less value, definitely you will not use it. So I found myself becoming more and more useless, so to speak, in the kingdom. Now, as a young Christian girl, I was vibrant. I, I was on fire for God. I never was a person who sings. I was never one of those in the forefront, but I was so good at the ministry of helps. I could organize. I took responsibility to make sure that things function as they should. So, it was later, many years of feeling not good enough after, I now realized that, do you know in the Bible, there's even the gift of administration. That's when I saw that I, I, I don't really need to be on the pulpit. I don't really need to be in people's face to function. There's a place for me. 
I can be behind the scenes. I can come up with ideas. I could help institutionalize some things, you know, just bring some other into things. And that's what I began to do. And the funny thing is that, you know, as you start using your gift, God also, as when he finds you faithful, okay, let me put it this way. I'm sure you must have heard, of course, your pastor. Oh, but just in case there, you have not heard. There's a story, the parable of the talents. And Jesus gave that parable himself. He was talking about people using what they have. And they said that one person was given five talents. The second person was given two talents. And the last one was given only one talent. And the, from what the Bible says, from what Jesus says, it was based on their capacity. God knew what, or the master knew what they could do, what they had capacity for. So he traveled and then when he got back, he expected his servants to come give account. And the first one who had five came back and presented five more, making 10, you know, saying that, oh, I have been able to achieve so much with what you gave me. The second one came and gave four, two plus two new ones to show that he had used what he had given. But the last one came and presented just that one, you know, and he was talking about his master, but that's not where I'm going. What happened was that after all said, was said and done, that one talent was given to the man with 10. And in life, especially with God, when you're faithful with what he has given to you, he begins to add more. So I found out that I was, as I stopped struggling to be what I was not, stopped comparing with others, I, as I got to that point where I decided not to leave my talent in the ground where I had buried it and instead bring it out and use it for service, then I began to see other things come up in my life. So, um, I, I come out now as a confident woman, I come out now as a woman who has focus or who knows what she's doing. But I wasn't like that. It, it started when I decided to come back and look at what I have. Many times we are blind to our own virtues. We are blind to the beautiful things in our lives. And we just sit down and we are, we are saying, oh, I, 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 I can't sing. Oh, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. But the thing you have, you're not using. And the funny thing is that there are other people who are wishing they could have what you have. So why not start with what you have been given? And let's see whether God, if he feels it's necessary, will bring others into your life. Right. Um, I think you, were, you said something while you were talking. And uh, we have a question here. I think it also answered um, that. Um, if you can actually um, serve as a woman, a pastor's wife, Without being um, in the, on, oh, the pulpit. No, on the pulpit. Yeah. Oh yeah. yes, yeah. yes, you can, you can. I think um, to start with, who is a pastor's wife? A pastor's wife is the help meet for her husband because the Bible from the beginning, when God said He was making woman, He said, "I'm going to make a woman. I'm going to make something else, somebody else, a companion, who will." be suitable you know it, some people say oh help mate help mate it's not help mate the bible says the bible says help meet now meet means suitable that is the exact fit so as you come into the life of a pastor as the wife of a pastor god in his own infinite wisdom already knows what your husband lacks and how you can compliment him so if your husband doesn't need a woman who will be on the pulpit, God is not forcing you to be it. He too shouldn't force you to be it. Instead, be the woman that God knows he needs. There are some men, pastors, who are failures when it comes to finances. They are not able to plan finances. They are not able to invest God's money into the work as it should be. 
it could be that you are the one who is good at accounting and you're good at you know uh, managing money that could be your assignment in his ministry i'm not talking of his private life now we're talking of the ministry that could be your assignment you could be an evangelist he is the pastor you could be the one who goes out to speak one-on-one -on -one evangelism so it's it's not like there's no hard fast hard and fast rule for who a pastor's wife should be except that she's there to complement her husband so whatever is your gifting whatever god has put in you if it is wisdom if it is prophecy whatever it is you use that thing to do the assignment so please um, i know a lot of people is sometimes the pastor's wife is not even their fault some other church members go out and see other pastor's wives and come back ah our pastor's wife eh? she cannot do anything other pastor's wives if you see them when they are praying if you see them when they are this and they begin to look down on her and then before long she too begins to feel that she's not good enough and starts struggling to become something she's not supposed to be but if she sits down and that's where this clarity comes in she assesses herself she knows her strengths she knows her gifts she knows her talents and knows how to apply them whether they talk or not it's not her business i remember when you were teaching you said um, praying being a worship leader and all of that does not really make you a person why but that does not mean you should not know how to do them yes yeah yeah, yeah. Truly. So uh, thank you for reminding me. Uh, so there's also a responsibility though for you to know some part. Thank mm -hmm. you for bringing that up because you cannot also be found wanting. Uh, you should be able to take on some responsibilities as they come. You know, there was a time one, long ago, more than 10 years ago, a man, a, a, an acquaintance of my husband came to church and, and after service, he was just talking with me and he asked me a question. He said, um, can you just walk up and take the mic from anybody in church? I said, no, I can't. He said, why? You're the pastor's wife. I said, yes, I'm pastor's wife. But one, my husband hasn't given me that impression. Two, did God send What am I going to do? <laughs> but now I can take the mic from somebody because maybe I have grown maybe god has put a word in my mouth so what i'm saying is that time changes a lot and if you're able to grow you find out that responsibilities will be coming you'll be faithful in them god keeps elevating you keeps empowering you and before long you're doing much more than you even thought you could do we're talking about clarity i would like you said something now if you can take the person asks if you can take the mic. Is that when somebody is on the altar doing something, mm. you go? Yeah. Okay. I want to really understand. Um, what well, the person was thinking. Yeah. Where the person was going. Yeah. The person was going. I think he was trying to check my um, authority level okay. in the church. That's what okay. I think he was okay. trying to do. And I don't know whether it was for good or for bad. Okay. But I thank God that I did not let it become an issue for me. Why I'm even bringing it up is that I was sharing with somebody one of those services. I was in church and then God gave me a word and I knew I was not climbing the altar again. So I was wondering, I finished my second service. Why is God giving me a word? Not knowing that in the fourth service, when the word came, my husband was not going to come out. Ordinarily, since I am not supposed to be doing anything, I would have just sat back. But because God had given me a word, at the time I knew I should take over. And I did it. And it wasn't a struggle, you know, because God was in it. All right, Ma, we have a question here. This um, lady wants to know how she can find herself, discover, get clarity, coming from a background, um, a poverty, you know, um, background, how she can get to, I mean, get to discover herself, have clarity in the midst of all of the pressure surrounding her so what do you have for hmm. this um, person um, since because I'm, she want to change the family um, the way the family is yeah. and all that and um, the first thing i'll say is that um, our backgrounds we really can't do anything about them 
that if you use them wisely, they become good foundations for your life. They become good foundations. And um, it doesn't matter what background anybody has. It doesn't matter. The past is not as relevant as the present and the future. And I keep telling people, um, your present situation and your past is not an indicator of what your future will be. You can be rich, stinkingly rich, and have a future of poverty. And you can be poor and have a future of wealth. So the most important thing right now is your mindset. How do you see yourself? There, there's one story that I listened to that changed me one of those times in my transition. And it was about a woman who had low self-esteem. She could never speak in front of people. She could never air her opinions. She was a footmat of everybody in school, in, at work, everywhere, everywhere, sincerely. And then she had an accident and she lost her memory. After losing her memory, she recovered, but she couldn't remember her past. And you know, from that point on, she started reading. And as she started reading, she began to imagine different things about herself. And before they knew what was happening, she was a public speaker, earning money, earning money. And everybody was like, ah, is this the same woman? Yes, she's the same woman. But thank God, her, her situation, that accident, took away the mentality that she had about herself and she created a new person and I think that's what she needs to do she needs to separate and isolate that thing of poverty keep it aside and begin to talk about who she is begin to talk with herself talk with God God what have you put in me what do I have and actually assess all her strengths all over the world and in fact in nigeria in particular you will find women who have done great exploits brought up their children and done so much in so-called poverty they had luck but they were able to bring out generations better than them so she shouldn't look at it as a limitation mm -hmm. whatever she makes a limitation will become a limitation in her life mm -hmm. Okay, um, I will still make reference to what you said when you started. During your teaching, if you don't see clearly, you will not have a smooth path. I remember the, um, while working, a, a colleague of mine said something. She shared her story, how um, she went to the university, spent four years, went to serve, started working in the bank, and she was not fulfilled had to go back to school for a second degree, came out, she was still not fulfilled until she began to pray and all of that. Later discovered that she was meant to be um, a fashion designer and today that's what she, you know, do today. So I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, that's also what happened because um, she was not clear about what she, yeah. um, and, and, to do that, and all that. And your friend, I really commend her. Do you know, there are a lot of people who find out that they are in the wrong place and they don't change. They continue like that. You know, any day can be your morning. You can, you can decide to chart a different course for your life at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Too many of us are afraid. We, we don't want to step out of our, of the boat. We don't want to leave our nest we, we we just want to remain in the that comfort zone but you cannot tell what what is ahead what is out there now this is your friend you're talking about imagine imagine that she was still in the bank imagine the frustration of earning that particular mm -hmm. salary the money she's earning right now i'm sure it's not mm -hmm. comparable yeah. the freedom of her time the the opportunity she has to use her creativity she can just think of any idea and make it on clothes and get paid for it she didn't have all those things in the bank so truly speaking we we owe ourselves that that 
boldness and courage to if we discover that we are not in the right place and you have to be sure please i'm not telling people to go on a wild goose chase but when you're certain you're you're sure that there's something better there's something more you feel you should be doing you should be able to step out and go and get it all right thank you if you're just joining us this is deborah's credus talk show with pastor manuel Izuma. there's a program for women in ministry and leadership all right, Ma, we have a question here. Um, somebody would like to know. Um, she is, um, has so many talent and she wants to know how she can um, be able to narrow down on one as a multi-talented person. So what advice do you, do you have for such a um, person? My advice, sincerely, I don't know whether it's going to be the acceptable advice, <laughs> but um i'll tell you the truth if you're multi-talented then use all your talents one of the things that held me back personally is that i have been wanting to find the one talent the one thing that i'm supposed to do but i have no one thing that permits me to leave all the other things to suffer okay so what I have learned and what I will advise anybody who is multi-talented is that you should be able to give each talent or each ability a chunk of time. Life is in phases. So depending on what phase, it could be a week phase, it could be a month phase, it could be a day phase, but you are able to, you know, apply each of your talents employ them let them work so now let me give an example with me i i, I can write okay. i love to write i'm finding out that i can talk so i like to talk and um, i'm finding out that um, i'm quite creative in um in administration in thinking of how to make things work yeah. So now if I have these areas that are functional, I'm also an entrepreneur. I'm always thinking of how to make money. I've not yet said making it as much as I want <laughs> yet, but I will. But you know, I, I, so I now am learning that I should take, if it's the writing, I should, I should be able to tell myself if I want to do two books in a year, I apply myself to make sure those two books happen, are created. I want to be able to speak. I should be able to set out the time for speaking. Mm -hmm. If I'm if I'm going out for maybe doing counseling or rendering support, helping hands to young ladies, I should be able to take time and make sure that none of my talents suffer. Because if I go back to the talent story, mm -hmm. that man that had five talents was not expected to leave any of them. He came back with five more. It means that he doubled everything he was given. And that's what we are supposed to do with our talents. I don't believe anyone is supposed to suffer. But if for any reason, and you know, um, this is where I envy, in quote, the people who have one talent, because somehow they are known for one thing. Mm, yeah. They are able to take that one thing and blow it and make it big, make it mega. Blessings to you. If it's only two, you use those two, but whatever you have, use them. And if possible, you raise one, if it's possible that anyone is to be elevated, you raise it and you make it your big do. Hi. Thank you so much, Ma, for your time. All right, um, there's one thing I can pick from all she has said today. She said, um, you should try and make use of all of your talent. So go ahead to do whatever it is you have been able to learn over the years, you have been able to master, and then you also try to see if you can become a master in one of them, but you can make use of all. All right, Ma, I don't know if you have any words for the people watching. Finally, as we close, um, I want to encourage you to take this journey this journey into clarity is a journey of self-discovery 
it's a journey where you begin to find out what you have and what you're here for and i think that that's one of the most important things we can ever do there's somebody that said there are two most important days in a man's life one the day he was born and two the day he finds out why and once you get clarity you also begin to know why and you can begin to pursue what your life is for this is deborah's credo and our promise is to nurture you and to nudge you by god's grace i'm trusting him that we will grow together and as you grow there'll be a time you shouldn't be in the nest anymore and at that time i will be pushing you gently till you go fulfill purpose I'm trusting God for the best and I pray that God blesses you indeed in Jesus name. Amen. I would like to pray with you because sincerely um, without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. So even this journey, you need him. So can we pray together? In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your daughters and your sons who have listened to this talk show and who have made decisions based on what they have heard. I ask that for everyone who is willing to take this journey of self-discovery, everyone willing to find their strengths, their gifts, their talents, and use them. I ask that, Lord, you will give them the grace to do so. I pray for wisdom. I pray that every one of them receive wisdom. Wisdom to know. Wisdom to figure out rightly. Wisdom to appreciate what they have. I pray, oh God, that as they go through their days, they will meet men and women who will point them in the direction you want them to go. But I pray above all, Holy Spirit, that you will talk to them deep in their hearts. You will whisper. You will shout if necessary and tell them who they are and who you have made them to be. And from today, Lord, may none of them walk amiss. From today, Lord, let everything about their lives be with focus, be with clarity, be with purpose. And Daddy, at the end, may they look back and see that a good difference has been made in their life and destiny, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <music>